What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Island Hopper TV and today we're coming to you from Portland, Maine. We're going to walk around here, <clears throat> originating here at the Portland Regency Hotel and Spa. And this is a pretty good uh, place to start. You can see the hotel has these vines growing up it and this dolphin sculpture with rock. And my Uber driver was actually telling me a couple different things about the history of Portland. So I'm going to share them while they're fresh on my mind here to start the video. So he said this city had burned down three times in its history. The first time was by the British in the 1700s. So many of the old buildings from way back in the 1700s do not exist because the British burned it down. But uh, there is still a lot of historical buildings here. You can see this brick path and the kind of the cobblestone rock. Also, another thing he was telling me, a lot of this area down here is backfill. And I asked him, I said, when did they do the backfill? And he said, in the um, 1800s. And I said, well, how did they do backfill like that in the 1800s? Because, you know, earth movers, right? You know, bulldozers and whatnot can carry a lot more dirt. What did they use in the 1800s? And he said, you know, he doesn't know. So it's kind of lost in history how they did that. Which led me into the next uh, comments that I was making was how these uh, masons did cut these rocks. Because, I mean, I've seen some rocks out here. Huge 10 by 10 rocks perfectly cut side by side dozens of them just lined up how did they cut that many rocks it's kind of like the mystery of uh, how did the Egyptians get those big rocks on top of the pyramids right obviously the Egyptian pyramids are way older than the colonial American uh, towns of New England but oh thank you I think it's still interesting because today, in this day and age, we cut things with diamonds, diamond saws, right? You know, we use, like, just for example, this. You can see the, the, the length of those rocks and all these rocks. These had to be cut to size. It's not like bricks where you, you know, you mold them and then you place them. These are actual real rock, granite. And these are the smaller varieties of what I'm talking about. But how did they cut those? Did they use a chisel? And uh, we were talking about how architecture today, the thing that's missing is the finishing touch. He said the, the bridge they built across the river here, I don't remember the name of it, but he said you can tell they didn't even put a finishing touch on it. With this stuff, they did the finishing touch. And so that finishing touch is what makes that kind of stuff last so long and we'll see how long modern architecture and stuff actually ends up really existing for but you can see it all around you wherever you live right but that's one of the things that I admire about New England is the hundred plus year old uh, engineering so right now we're coming up to what is the waterfront and there is a couple areas around this town that I'll be walking around aside from where I just started I know you guys probably want me to walk in there uh, a little bit more but I wanted to go down to this marina at the very least and show you guys so that's where we'll pick up Okay, so now we're here down on the waterfront, and turns out there's this boat right here, and it's a restaurant. And I have not actually gone in there, so let's see what we have. Try to go in there and see if I'm allowed. But they say they have lunch, dinner, and cocktails outside decks. So let's see, this is called Demilio, Demillo's, D-I-M-I-L-L-O, Demillo. Show you guys over here. So 
The leaves in Portland are now starting to change. It is late September, and I said, what is it that causes that? Is it the, the weather or what? And he was saying that it could be the chlorophyll, it's the, the sun, there's very, many different factors, but in October it'll be really colorful. So let's see what this place has to offer. if you want a really great view. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. This is a beautiful environment all in here. This is really... Oh, and there's a cruise ship right there. Where's that cruise ship going? Gosh, guys. This is really a great place to be. You gotta come here. I didn't want to do this life post out here. would be tempted to go out on but I don't even think they're going on that there's actually a cruise ship that is in harbor so for those of you who are arriving on a cruise ship I do recommend going to DeMillo's Mellos so add that to your list that was, I had uh, steamed lobster they even give you instructions on how to crack it but you can get baked lobster steamed lobster I also had some chowder while I was there and a cappuccino. Didn't drink any alcohol because it's too early. But now we are headed out. You can see the next cruise is at 11.45. But for those of you who don't want to do the whole dine-in thing, you can go to some of these smaller places like Portland uh, Lobster Company. <laughs> And we're going to keep this tour moving here. Get your tickets right there.
There's where I started the video right there. right here is the public market house there's the Portland Wow Portland is bigger than I thought and there's a lot to do here so it's a lot of intricate stuff wrapped into here saying there used to be a lot of electric trolleys all over here. Wow, there's quite a few areas to see around uh, Portland here. I mean, this is, for a small city, it's quite vibrant. You know, I've been to bigger cities than this that have way less going on in these downtown areas. could just be a beautiful day and that's why people are out but supposedly it's the first day of fall late September 2019 today is about 74 degrees and I don't think it gets any better than that Casco and Congress Street. Street. Let's take a look down here. Oh, a Dunkin' Donuts. How fun. <laughs> oh, Holiday Inn. <laughs> Sorry.
So this is Congress Street and High Street. many places as I can here for you. There are some beaches around here, believe it or not. So we're really just cruising around here, showing you guys Congress Street at this moment, which I've been walking on now for the last 10 minutes. And it's quite vibrant actually, there's a lot going on. see and do out here. Wow. Never would have suspected this big of a central area in Portland. It's almost more happening in Portland, Oregon.
right here we've come to another interesting interchange. So you have the cruise ship here, this is the Norwegian Escape, and then you have this trolley train that you take called the Main Narrow Gouge. So, pretty cool. You have this right here, cruise port terminal, ocean gateway, and the main narrow gauge train. here to the old port. Is that a bird? It is a bird. A little baby seagull. got Uber? So this is the eastern end of the peninsula here in Portland. You can see the railroad right there that that train goes on. And then over here they actually have a beach. It's over here. There's a big ship up there on that mountain. What's a ship doing on a mountain? What was that, a lilikoi? No, that's an apple. So now we got some rain. I'm walking up the Fort Allen Trail, and I'm under this canopy, which is protecting me from the rain. So that's pretty good. 
Let's see where this trail takes me. Oh, by the way, my legs still hurt from hiking up the Bunker Hill uh, Monument. Only 294 steps, but I mean, I walk a lot. But I don't typically walk 294 steps consecutively. If you haven't already seen the video from Boston on this channel, you can search it and you can see where I hiked up Bunker Hill. But, um, hmm. There we go. Fort Allen. It was raining pretty hard earlier. I thought that was a ship. It is not a ship. That is the mast of a ship that no longer is a ship. Oh my gosh. We got a rainbow. This is great. So this is a butterfly garden. You can see some of the butterflies already out there. Cape Elizabeth, this is Fort Williams, and uh, this actual lighthouse was commissioned in 1790. Sorry, those little allergens. Uh, it was commissioned by George Washington himself in 1790. That noise you're hearing is the whistle house. And this, uh, Fort Williams Cape Elizabeth Lighthouse was actually, um, or is actually the most photographed lighthouse from what I've heard in America. So it's quite the sight. Really nice place to come. Uh, both sides are nice. This is the side towards Portland. This side over here is towards like Kennebunkport, Saco. Um, I think I prefer going in the direction towards Kenny Bunkport. This is the direction that I'm coming from is heading towards that. But uh, I'm coming from the Portland side, which is the cliff walk. So Fort Williams Park cliff walk. Give you a view here. Another beautiful day here in Portland, Maine. Late September. Not seeing any whales. I don't know where that trolley goes. I have to get information about that. Hey, the trolley's called the Phoenix. That little trail right there is the one that I liked. I thought it was more a little bit more serene. Let me 
see if I can get a little history for you here. So Portland Head Lighthouse. Since its commission by George Washington in 1790, Portland Head Light remains an enduring symbol of the rugged, solid characteristic of a magnificent coastline and proud people weathering the challenges of nature and time. In observance of Greater Portland 550th or anniversary, I'm sorry, 350th, to the aspirations and achievements of those who came before us and present to the future generations who will continue to continue its proud heritage. George Bush, Vice President of the United States, July 1982. So there you go. That's the trail that I like hiking. Let's see what's up over here with this uh, Cousins Maine Lobster. get information about this uh, trolley. chance come up here in September late September early October and you won't regret it it's a pretty good place